Hello students, this is Dr. S. M. Indamati, Assistant Professor from the Department of Biotechnology, School of Bio and Chemical Engineering, Satibama Institute of Science and Technology. Today, I am here to give a presentation on the topic, Antigenic Structure and Clinical Infections of Escherichia coli. Let's first look into the basics of Escherichia coli, which is in short called E. coli. This was earlier called as Bacterium coli commune. This is a gram-negative bacilli, I mean rods in shape. They are motile with peritricus flagella, which means flagella present all over the cells, uh, while few are non-motile too. Capsules and fimbriae are seen. Fimbriae are short hair-like appendages that is present outside the cell wall. These fimbriae helps the organisms to bind to the host cell receptors and they are non-sporing, which means they don't produce any spores. Coming to its cultural characteristics, Escherichia coli does not require any special media, so they can be grown on ordinary media like nutrient agar itself. On nutrient agar, Escherichia coli is able to form two different types of colonies, smooth and rough colonies. Smooth colonies are large, thick, grayish, white, smooth and opaque, while the rough colonies are irregular and dull surfaced. This variation from smooth to rough happens because of the continuous or repeated cultures on plating media. Apart from nutrient agar, other media that we could use to grow Escherichia coli is uh, blood agar as well as uh, meconchi agar. On meconchi agar, E. coli are able to form pink color colonies due to lactose fermentation. Coming to the biochemical uh, characteristics of E. coli, Escherichia coli is able to ferment n number of sugars which means glucose, galactose, maltose, sucrose, mannitol, galactose and so on. They are indole and MR positive while VP, urease and citrate negative. And you can see an image of uh, Escherichia coli and that's an electron microscopic image of E. coli. Coming to the antigenic structure of Escherichia coli, the serotyping of E. coli is basically done on the basis of three antigens, the somatic O antigens, the flagellar H antigen as well as the capsular K antigens. Around 170 different types of O antigen, 100 different types of K antigens and 75 different types of H antigens are identified till date. The K antigen is basically present on the microcapsule or on the envelope of the bacterium and this K antigen encloses the somatic O antigen. The major function of K as well as O antigen is to inhibit phagocytosis and to protect the bacteria from the host's immune system. K antigen was initially classified into three classes, a heat labile L toxin and heat stable A and B subunits. But later it was identified that B is not a separate entity and so it was included under the thermostable A itself. So later on this capsular K antigen was just classified into two types, the thermolabile L and the thermostable A antigens. And uh, the antigens that colonizes the colon region of the host intestines constitute the O antigens. You can see the antigenic structure uh, of E. coli which shows uh, K antigen and O antigen which is composed of a lipopolysaccharide. Coming to the virulence factors, there are two types of virulence factors of E. coli. Uh, one are the surface antigens and other are the toxins. The surface antigens include the somatic antigens O, the capsular antigen K, the fimbrial antigens as well as colonization factor antigens. The functions of O and K antigens as I have already said, uh, their function is to inhibit phagocytosis and protect the bacterium from the host's defense as well as these two antigens protect the bacterium from the antibactericidal effects of the complements as well as serum. This O antigen uh, is basically uh, a lipopolysaccharide and fimbrial antigens. Fimbrial uh, antigens are of two types. Uh, one type of fimbrae is chromosomally determined, another type of fimbrae are plasmid encoded. The chromosomally determined fimbrial structures have no relevance in pathogenesis, whereas the plasmid encoded fimbrial structures are highly relevant in pathogenesis, which means it constitutes so much towards the virulence of E. coli. Then we have the colonization factor antigens which are responsible for causing urinary tract infections by Escherichia coli. Talking about the toxins, there are two types of toxins, hemolysins as well as enterotoxins. Hemolysins have no prevalence or uh, they have no importance in 
virulence of E. coli. So, we will concentrate much on enterotoxins. Enterotoxins are classified into three types a heat labile LT, heat stable ST, and virotoxin called VT, which is also called shiga like toxin or SLT. So, we will uh, see the LT toxin first. LT toxin is similar to that of cholera toxin in structure, antigenic properties as well as uh, its mode of action. That is why a standard test that has been employed to detect cholera toxin has been employed to test the same LT toxin also. That is nothing but uh, an experimental setup called rabbit ileal loop model where the ileum part of the rabbit's intestine is ligated into loop shape and the toxin is injected into some region of the ligated loop. After some time, the toxin causes ballooning of the rabbit ileal loop as well as fluid outpouring from the ligated loop. So, this test is a standard test for cholera enterotoxins. The same is applied to LT toxin here. This LT toxin is composed of two units uh, A and B. A is an active fragment, B is a binding fragment. So, this uh, toxin binds to the host cell receptors through the binding fragment B where the fragment A splits up into A1 and A2. This A1 and A2 are able to activate the adenyl cyclase in the intestines which in turn activates the cyclic AMP called cyclic adenosine monophosphate which causes fluid outpouring and watery diarrhea due to this toxin. Then we have ST. They are low molecular weight polypeptides and they are poorly antigenic. This ST is also classified into two types STA or ST1 and STB or ST2. STA uh, acts by activating the cyclic guanosine monophosphate leading to fluid outpouring and watery diarrhea. The mode of action of STB is unknown but it is definitely not through the activation of cyclic AMP or cyclic GMP. And this STA and STB toxins are completely plasmid encoded and uh, these two toxins are able to cause fluid outpouring and ballooning in ligated loop models of infant mice and weaned piglets. The last one is uh, virotoxin or VT toxin. It got its name because they, are, they have a special affinity towards viro cells. They are special type of cell lines obtained from African green monkey kidney cells. Uh, so, this toxin uh, has a property similar to that of shiga like toxin that is SLT and it is composed of two subunits again A and B and the toxin is completely phage encoded. To talk about the clinical infections, E. coli are able to cause four major clinical infections namely urinary tract infections, diarrhea, pyogenic infections and septicemia. So first urinary tract infections, E. coli is the most important or prominent bacteria when it comes to urinary tract infections. Uh, it starts with urinary obstruction in men and women. In case of men, it starts with prostatic enlargement. Prostrates are glands in men and when these glands enlarge, uh, it, start, uh, it continues with urinary obstruction. When in case of women, uh, through pregnancy and calculi, urinary obstruction starts. In case of pregnant women, urinary obstruction and uh, UTI, this urinary tract infections are basically asymptomatic. If this kind of asymptomatic bacteriuria is left undetected or untreated, uh, it will lead to hypertension and pyelonephritis that is infection of the nephrons in pregnant women and the fetus also gets affected through stillbirth or miscarriage or uh, prenatal death as well. Coming to the pyogenic infections, they are basically intra-abdominal infections which includes the peritonitis which means inflammation of the peritoneum region, infections of the perianal region uh, as well as abscesses in the internal organs. Meningitic involvement is very rare which means uh, the infections in the meninges of the brain is a bit rare. Then we have septicemia which is caused by E. coli uh, which leads to septic shock. I have uh, already said in another video like septicemia is an infection where the organism evades the bloodstream, multiplies there, produces toxic products and it causes swinging type of fever. So the same applies here. The bacteria produces septic shock and it causes a condition called systemic inflammatory response syndrome or SIDS. The last one is diarrhea. 
Escherichia coli is basically a commensal and it's a parasite in human intestines and animal intestines and they are generally released in human and animal feces. When they are released through human or animal feces, they are able to uh, attack or cause infection to the genital parts as well. The five different types of uh, diarogenic E. coli have been identified. They are enteropathogenic, enterotoxigenic, enteroinvasive, enterohemorrhagic and enteroaggregative Escherichia coli. So talking about the enteropathogenic E. coli, they cause diarrhea or sporadic diarrhea uh, to infants, children and very less common in adults. This was very common during the 1940s to 1960s. Later on, this has uh, no clinical uh, importance. And this type of E. coli are uh, identified or serotyped through their O and B antigens. Then we have enterotoxigenic E. coli which starts with a, a mild watery diarrhea and it continues with a profuse dysentery like uh, which is similar to that of cholera. This happens generally in developing countries. Uh, people who travel from developed countries to developing countries have the possibilities of developing a condition called traveler's diarrhea because of this enterotoxigenic E. coli. The toxin production is completely plasmid encoded. And we have the enteroinvasive E. coli and these E. coli have a special affinity towards the intestinal epithelial cells. These were earlier mistaken for uh, Shigella bacilli because they share a common O antigen. I mean this uh, E. coli, enteroinvasive E. coli as well as Shigella species, they shared a common O antigen and they showed some cross reaction. So they were mistaken for Shigella in the earlier days. So they were placed under a special uh, category called alkalescence dispar group and they were earlier called as Shigella alkalescence. And these E. coli also are able to cause mild diarrhea to dysentery and the toxins produced are completely plasmid encoded which means uh, the genes in the plasmids are responsible for producing the toxins of this E. coli. Then we have enterohemorrhagic E. coli. Uh, this causes again mild diarrhea to fatal dysentery. Along with this, it causes hemorrhagic colitis, inflammation or infection of the colon region of the intestine as well as hemorrhagic uremic syndrome. The target cells are the vascular endothelial cells actually and uh, infections by enterohemorrhagic E. coli occurs through food poisoning. Food poisoning occurs uh, through the contaminated foods uh, which are contaminated by human or animal feces. Then we have the enteroaggregative E. coli. Enteroaggregative, it got its name because it gives uh, an appearance of stacked brick. If bricks are like stacked uh, one above the other, how it would look like? The same appearance it would give when cultured on special cell lines called HEP2 cell lines. HEP2 cell lines are nothing but human epidermoid carcinoma cell lines. So when cultured on these cell lines, they give a stacked brick like appearance and they cause persistent diarrhea and they form a low molecular weight heat stable toxin called EAST1, enteroaggregative heat stable enterotoxin 1. So talking about the treatment of Escherichia coli, uh, generally antibiotics are not preferred for E. coli but still in case of UTI infections, uh, cotrimoxazole is given, nitrofurantoin is given, uh, ampicillin can be given. And apart from these three drugs, other antibiotics in case of life-threatening infections of E. coli, uh, imipenem, meripenem, uh, piperazilin, clistatin, etc. can be given as drugs of choice. We have reached the conclusive slide. Thank you students for taking your time to watch this presentation.